Hello, this is Chris Cartea, and this is the 19th episode of the Smoking Nerf News. Now, this is going to be a hard episode because there's some things that I am going to say, and there's some things I can say and can't say simply because of my loyalty to certain companies and things that you can and can't say when you're employed uh, by certain companies. Um, but I will tell you this, this is the last episode that you may be seeing from Singapore for a while, because on Friday, the 4th of August, I am actually flying back to California for a couple months. On business, yes. And, um, and then I'm coming back in October, and I am working on some more stuff. Um, part of uh, what I'm doing is business trip. Part of what I'm doing is um, is paid leave. So I'm taking a little bit of a vacation, and um, I'm going to be gone for a little while. But I should still be updating and everything else. So why well, these things are dirty? So I just want to let you know. That, yeah, I'm going to be gone for a while. So what we got here is we got a Cohiba Siglo Four right here. All right, Cohiba Sigma 4. And now as I always light them with a torch lighter. Without drawing on it, I just heat up the inside of the filler. I char the outside of it and start drawing it. This makes it so the flame of the lighter does not go into the filler and make the cigar taste bad. Anybody who is really big into cigars knows that cigars are more a personal thing. More about your own personal enjoyment. Much more than a bragging right or just buy the most expensive cigars. As a matter of fact, I barely even smoke Cohiba cigars. You may have seen a few posts where there's a few Cohibas, okay? But I'm usually smoking Monte Cristos. Monte Cristos are my favorite brand. They have a little more kick to them, and they're very nice. But a Sigla 4 is an absolutely excellent cigar. Can you see that cherry right there? Yeah. Aha. Now it's from the outside, and it's caught up to the rest of the filler. That is a good way to light a cigar. So let's see a few things. Tomorrow, we have our Singapore War at the, um, at the uh, Airsoft place. Um, 220 foot per second limit. So I just, I'm deciding to do something a little bit dangerous, maybe. I'm going to roll with this. And that. And that's it. I'm going to bring another pistol just in case this one actually breaks the 220 uh, limit. And it could for the simple reason that it's running a 12K Nerf Turf Spring and a 6K Orange Modworks um, Raider Spring that has been cut down so that it can um, so that it can fire at very high velocity. I don't think because of a small plunger tube it would break 200. 200 being the record for one of these. But it is a nicer spring array than I used to break this into 200. Oh, and by the way, you may want to do some digging to figure out which ultra match this is. This is the ultra match that was knocking down Stefan Darts with Stefan Darts from 10 feet away. And I did that as every day as practice. Well, from hitting the junction of my wire hanger sitting across the room where I usually hang my comforter and being able to hit it 9 out of 10 times right in the junction, uh, that hasn't changed. But of course, you're moving around in battle and everything. But keep in mind, this is a very inherently accurate blaster. I think a little less accurate at high speed. Uh, usually I have it with one spring instead of two. But for my single shot blaster, I need it to be more powerful than my magazine fed blaster, which is typically used for um, cover fire, um, hitting multiple target fire at close range, and for um, for a backup blaster, that's what I usually use a magazine fed for. Which this one's no spring chicken either. This one hits 150 to 170. That's uh, pretty much XPT retaliator ranges for most people. It's going to be really really interesting. So uh, a little bit of news. Let's see. Everybody knows that the um, the regulator is 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 out. Well, not the regulator. Is that called the regulator? Yeah, regulator. Regulator is out. Regulator, wow. That is a good blaster. It, it, it's very solidly built, actually. 
Um, the one you got the problems with, for example, the flywheel cage. Oh, and by the way, I am buying a regulator. I barely buy um, flywheel blasters. As a matter of fact, I have like strifes that I bought at like the fire sale. You know the the um, the black uh, Black Friday sale last year. And I still have not used them. Actually, not last year. The year before that. Yeah, 2015. And I still, I have one. I still new in box. I'm not selling it. So don't don't ask. Um, still, yeah. Because I just don't use flywheel blasters. But this blaster, I'm buying. Not only because it has three-way selector on it for three-round burst. Full auto and, and single fire which I think has been long needed in uh, Nerf Blasters. I've been saying that since the Stampede. But also just because the blaster is just really solid. Yes, you have a little PC board above your um, above your flywheel cage. Uh, it's not very moddable in that sense. But it does take um, three lithium um, 3.7 volters without any problems. Um, it doesn't speed up your pusher when you have three, three, three of those. It doesn't fry your circuitry. I like that. Um, it's, it's also, it's, it's got a little, you're out of ammo light, which I would very quickly cover up and tell all of your friends and foes that are battling you that you are in fact out of ammo. Um, it is a little long. It is a little big, but I do like the fact that it has a grip in the middle between the magazine and, and the pistol grip. It's really nice. And forget about some of those attachments, especially that one where you carry, like, ah, oh, that thing looks like, you know, that's a reject prop from, like, Star Trek or something. Yeah, really bad. Okay. But, at any rate, um, it's a really good blaster. Another one, Busby just came out with, uh, actually, it's not Busby, it's that new company, came out with a, with a belt fed that's doing 100 feet per second out of the box. Average 100 feet per second out of the box. Impressive. Man, we got to get a lot of belts and just feed it through there, man. Really, really cool. Um, so, to, to up the ante, and that's only 20 bucks. Yeah, 20. 20 bucks at Walmart. The Walmart exclusive. It, it looks like a great blaster. That's really going to give the regulator a run for the money. Um, let's see. And then we have, um, of course, um, we, we have the, 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 the Raptor Strike. Which, from what I understand, in the middle of it, for some reason, it's glued. Why are they doing that? I know what they're doing. They don't want modders to mod it. But, I think I can do something with it. Um, something good. Um, I'm not going to say what it is. It's still magazine-fed everything. I'm not going to say what it is. Simply because I work for a company that works and deals in mods. But let's just say this. If I mm, somehow, I don't know, build a breach that... Uh, in concept, build a breach that I put in my little red recon, and uh, oh, I don't know, maybe uh, might end up something like that as a kit later on for jet blasters. Yeah, it won't be exactly the same because brass is stainless, but in concept, it's the same. Maybe a little different. I'm not gonna say how, but let's just say all that kind of stuff that I build on the side makes it into production somehow. Maybe in a more productive kind of way, makes it into production. Put in mind, I'm not the only guy at Jet Blasters, okay? Um, you're gonna find that out in the next few months. I'm not the only guy at Jet Blasters, okay? And there are things that, of course, are great, and there are things that maybe are not great. So don't label me for everything that's made. But let's just say another thing that's coming out really soon, Merlin. Now, we call this the ZRO, the Zero. And I did give them the privilege to, um, to, to use the Merlin name. As long as they did not call it Merlin so that Rolls Royce would not get pissed off for taking the copyright um, for the Merlin name for their, of course, their engines that are used on their Spitfires and their P-51 Mustangs that the United States used, which um, the company called North American Aviation built in World War II. Um, but they use Zero. And actually, it's a better name because it goes along with Katana... It goes along with Alpha, Omega. It's a little bit more uh, logical of a name. ZRO. Okay. What it is, is a uh, classic piece that is using a different kind of rifling entirely. Inverted rifling. Now, invert, inverse rifling is what 
um, it basically it makes zones of lower pressure rather than pressure points of higher pressure to spin a dart. That's really cool. As a matter of fact, I think that a shooter should have a variation of, of barrels. Um, I have a variation of barrels, let's say for my bird of prey, okay? I used to have a six and a half inch barrel that if you take off the wings and you fire it. Now you may look at my videos, you'll see the Armageddon footage. That's the bird of prey LT with the six and a half inch barrel, yeah. And it did pretty good. I mean, I bricked quite a few people with a small little, a small little blaster with a six and a half inch barrel on and no wings. Um, I have a 10 inch barrel. Now that 10 inch barrel is sheathed by a piece of aluminum. I have a four, um, well, I'll have to show you right here. I have a Roboman turret that the top barrel is used for a single and the other three are throated out at about this point right here where you would have three Stephens. They're throated out to 512. Then from 512, gradually goes to 509. These are shotgun barrels. And what they're made to do is to take three shots and, and throw them in a, at, at a shotgun blast at a velocity of about 150 feet per second, which is impressive that because that's throwing 3.6 grams of darts if you're using prototype darts at 150 feet per second, at which, is, which clears about 120, 130 feet. That's nice. That's nice. Okay. Um, I think everybody should have a variation of barrels. Um, my uh, Big Blue has a aluminum barrel, has a zero barrel, has a 16-inch barrel. Um, I'm going to also make a brass barrel for it. So, Oh, and it does have a brass barrel. It has the other brass barrel, but I'm making a new brass barrel. So that blaster, and you've probably seen it, it has three barrels, you know. So it's actually really good to play around and have uh, different barrels and different barrel attachments. Because you're going to go to different wars. You're going to use different yields. Let's say, for example, you have that brass 16-inch barrel that I used to have. Okay? Um, you have that. Um, I'm building another one because that one's a little old. And it's using a prototype dark gate. I want to use a new dark gate. And build one that's just 18 inches long from the, from the very beginning. Okay? That's why I, I'm, I'm changing it. And plus, I found that the new Alpha, alpha Kit Plunger actually can use much more uh, much more room in the barrel so uh, because it holds more air and it has more um, it has more volume on exit it actually would would fare from an 18 inch barrel that's the other reason but uh, you may notice I have that barrel okay you throw a nerf 16 in there it's doing like 250 feet per second the minute I have to go to a war that I have to drop my mod limits let's say 10 feet per second let's say um, I'm sorry, let's say 10 kilograms, let's say 12 kilograms, let's say 14. That barrel is not the best barrel to use, and now I should switch to something that's like maybe a stock alpha barrel. Yeah. See what I mean? Mm-hmm. Well, maybe stock barrel with a Merlin if I'm running 14. Um, so it's really nice to have a variation of barrels if you can for your primary because when your when your velocity of your spring changes, so does the peak volume for your barrels. Uh, you may play a close combat war where you really don't need um, you really don't need a, 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 a scar or a merlin, but you you want to be able to hit stuff really close, which is the reason I'm, I'm doing this. This is a close uh, quarters battle uh, indoors, so. But, or you may be outside where you want to plink people from very far away. All right. Um, the BDSM, for example, also has multiple barrels. Um, that, ha that one has a 14, a 14, a 15 Ultra Match, a 15 Ultra Match with a Merlin, and that's just by adding a uh, brass Merlin to it, and a 20. That's right, a 20 inch barrel, <clears throat> which is incredibly stable. But it, doesn't, it's, it does slow it down a little bit. So, like, for example, if I'm outdoors, I'm playing outdoors with streamlines. I would want the 15 with a Merlin. Why? Because I need more stabilization to keep that streamline dart straight when it's firing. Because any little bit of wind hits in anything, it will be thrown off course. Unlike a Stefan dart, where I don't have to worry about it. Ah, so I can use 15-inch Ultra Match. Awesome. Let's just the choke, the one and an eighth choke on the front of it. Awesome. Okay, well, I say the same thing about about um, zero barrels, scar barrels. I say the same thing about barrel lengths. If you have a barrel that can be screwed on there, dude, get different lengths. Why not? 
why not do that? You know, that, that's totally awesome. You got uh, different diameters of arrow for different darts. Let's say all your friends use worker darts. Okay, the Omni Kid is going to have a, a barrel that has a wider diameter on it, and worker darts would probably work really good in it. Get it? See? So, and the Omni Barrel also works better with that wider diameter for streamlines. So, it is good to have um, a different stuff, you see. So, um, I hear the judge is having production problems. Why am I not surprised the judge is having production problems? Why? I mean, why am I not surprised? As you, as you know, I have been ribbing the judge um, ever since I've heard of it. Um, ever since I saw the Toy Fair, I went, what the fuck? I saw videos from the Toy Fair going, what the fuck? You know? And I was just like, yeah. This is this is a stupid... Oh, my lighter goes out. Look at that. Huh. Hold on. There we go. Just shake it up a little. That's fine. <laughs> But I am guessing it's probably that turret because it bounces back and forth. It doesn't always land. Especially if you prime it really fast. Yeah, that's my guess. That's my guess, okay? Um, but what I've always said, quite simply, hold on a second, quite simply, hmm. excuse me a second. What I've always said, really simple. Judge this. Oh, you guys see it in front? Nothing on it? Okay. <laughs> you can't beat that, dude. That's 152 per second. Oh, and the only reason it didn't go through was because of this uh, this wall here. Let's let's get around that wall, shall we? So, yeah, of course it's not going to go through two things of cardboard, right? Not at 150 feet per second, but watch this. I'm going to go a little between it, like right under it. Can you see it? First shot, right. And right through it. Why did it go through it at 150 feet per second? Well, I have my theories. 150 is usually not enough to bust a box, especially one that's like bleached white paper like this. Usually they're stronger. Um, my theory is, is that when it flies out of the barrel, all three are hitting like this. So it has more weight. And so when you have more weight, you have more force. When you have more force, it's easier to go through. I was quite taken the other day when I was actually playing with, um, in my opinion, the judge of all judges right here. And the, I fired three shots and it actually went through the cardboard. I'm like, huh, my crony figure off? No, it was still doing like 150, 160. Usually not enough to cleanly go through like single corrugated. But I did it. And that's because the force is represented by more weight. And if you do it close enough to where the darts are, are not split up or all three darts are hitting at once or very close to once, you'll bust through the box. If it's far away, of course not, right? Because the darts are spread out and that means your impact is spread out. Quite fascinating, quite fascinating. Yeah. So at any rate, this is Chris Cartea. Uh, don't you go changing. Peace out.